increased productivity is very important. And the trade is also very important for a country's economic development. And when you find this kind of political system help China to capture that opportunity. And that's the reason why China trade grows so fast. My name is Justin Ifulin. I'm a professor at the Institute of New Structural Economics, Peking University. Now we have uh, five labors uh, hierarchies in the Chinese <coughs> local and uh, government system. Central government, province government, and the prefectural government, county government, and then the district government. Local officials, they have a tenure in one you know, post. After they serve about three to five years, then they will be assigned to the other you know, uh, post. And uh, this kind of system mm. has been in China for a thousand years. And that kind of system, certainly an official working on a post, they accumulate the experiences, knowledges. And those kind of experiences and knowledges uh, will be able to help him to work in the new positions because you know, they can apply those kind of experiences, knowledges in their new job. Well, the competitive advantage is something, an economic term. A countries or an economy, they can produce something at relatively low cost compared to you know, other sources of you know, producing those goods in other countries and so on. And those kind of concepts called competitive advantages. And a review compared to advantage is that it's a measurement, you know, because if you have the competitive advantages and how we understand that, we can look into, let's say, a country, the export. Certainly they export many things. And supposedly there are some item, for example, household appliances. The share of the household appliances in the total value of the export compared to the shares of household appliances in the global total export. Supposedly in the global you know, export, it's 10%. But in your country, it's 20%. So you're higher than the global share. Then under that situation, it indicate you have the reviewed competitive advantages in that product, in household appliances. So it's a measurement to see how strong your competitive advantages in certain type of goods that you produce. If the officials worked in one you know, county or in one prefecture. In the prefectures, they have review competitive advantage in, for example, household appliances. And certainly these officials accumulate learned experiences on how to organize production in that household appliances. Then if he assigned to other locations, they also have the competitive advantages in producing household appliances. And it seems that this official already learned the experiences, how to organize the production, how to market the good to the global markets. Those kind of knowledge will help the official in the new post to organize the production in the household appliances and they increase the production and the competitiveness of this location for the export of this household appliances. And this is how we found the experiences in the past will help you to, you know, explore the competitive advantages in your 
new assignments? Well, it's a background. You know, it's a liberalization process. And in this background, you know, officials with different experiences, then they will be able to capture this opportunity better. And so if you and officials, you know, work in certain locations, they have review competitive advantages in producing certain goods. And they can export as good strongly. And when you assign to the other locations, they also have competitive advantages in those kind of production. But your experiences will, you know, help you to help this location to strengthen their ability to export. That's what we want. Because increased productivity is very important. And the trade is also very important for a country's economic development. And when you find this kind of political system help China to capture that opportunity. And that's the reason why China trade grows so fast. Uh, and, and so that's the reason why, one of the reasons why after the trade liberalization, China now becomes the largest exporters in the world, and especially in the manufacturing goods. One thing is that uh, certainly every country has its own institutions. And uh, some institutions certainly will help the country to do things better. And uh, some institutions may be uh, you know, a bottleneck or maybe a barrier where the countries grow. And, uh, and we, un we need to understand what kind of institution will facilitate a country's you know, uh, development. And that's the purpose of the study. I work at the World Bank as a chief economist. Then I returned to China in 2012 and I built up the Institute of New Structural Economics. And it's a uh, you know, attempt to develop a new discipline in the modern economics, and especially to bring in the structural perspective into our analysis. Because a country, every country, at a different stage of development, they have their own economic structure related to the production structure, infrastructure, and uh, you know, institution, and so on. And we try to understand the differences in the structure and what is its implication for the economic operation. And the difference certainly has some reason. And we will try to understand what are the reasons for the country to have different structure and how those kind of structures impact on the economic performance in the country.